the biblical truth of our hymns. And sometimes when you find out the story, the history behind the hymn, the hymn becomes more interesting. When we did, yes, Jesus loves me, and find out that that was written for a little book, little child that was dying. I might hear that now, it gives more sense. And today, if you're a Baptist and you've been in church and you've been in an altar call, you've heard today's hymn, Just As I Am. And we've got a in depth, I hope we can get to the to the hymn, but we know the words of the hymn, and it's great. But I never saw this before about Charlotte Elliott. And let's just get right into it. She's an English poet. Uh, 112 hymns. I'm just reading this. In spite of being raised in a Christian home, she reflected on her conflicts and doubts, but was unsure of her relationship with Christ. So she penned her words of assurance about Jesus loving her, just as I was. William Bradbury composed the music, music for her lyrics and published the song in 1849. The hymn was translated to many languages with tens of thousands of people committing their life to Christ during the playing of it. She wrote other hymns and books. Now listen, I know you, we used to just do about the, the writer, but listen to her family. Her maternal, her maternal grandfather, Reverend Henry Venn, V-E-N-N, -N, of Chapham Sec, of Hedersfield in Yelling, England, was a divine. He wrote The Complete Duty of Man, 1763, and was one of the band of ministers whose labors and writings brought about the promoted the Great Awakening of the 18th century among the churches of Great Britain. He married the daughter of Reverend Thomas Bishop D.D., a divine Ipswich, Lipswich, the eldest daughter Ellen, often addressed in Reverend Venn's memoirs, married on 30 December 1785, Charles Elliot, a, a silk merchant of Chatham and Burnham. Of their six children, Charlotte was the third daughter. Her siblings were Henry Venn Elliot and Edward Bishop Elliot, who were members of the clergy and engaged in assist assistance to the vicar, rector and parishes the priests of St. Mary's, the Virgin Church, and St. Mark's Church, respectively. Henry Van Elliot was the founder of St. Mary's Hall in Brighton. There was also a sister, Helen. Her childhood was passed in a circle of great refinement and piety. This woman is surrounded by clergy. She was highly educated and developed at an early age a great passion for music and art. At an early age, Charlotte began to be aware of her sinful nature and of her need to resist sin enticement. Charlotte felt unworthy of God's grace while growing up and incapable of facing a righteous and perfect God. She was continuously told by different pastors at many churches that visited to pray more, study the Bible more, and to perform more noble deeds. Different pastors of many churches did not tell her about Jesus, as we'll see in a moment. Shame on them. She has a need and she don't want she knows she's a sinner and she's she's unworthy of God's grace. Oh read the Bible more, pray more, come to our church. She became a a favorite of social circle. <laughs> that sounds like today. Where religion was not mentioned. Sounds bad, but it gets good. A severe sickness in 1821 removed her from these companions and led her to feel a need for a personal savior. 
about this time, the Reverend Dr. Cesar, I don't want to get this name wrong, forgive me, C-E-S-A-R Mellon, M-A-L-A-N of Geneva, who was on a visit to the father's chaplain resident, Grove House. Ask her whether she was at peace with God, a question she resented at the time and refused to talk about that day. But a few days later, she called upon Dr. Mallet and apologized, saying she wanted to cleanse her life before becoming a Christian. She wanted to work it out. She wanted to be good. Watch this. Mallet, Dr. Mallet answered, come just as you are. He told her, don't, don't clean up your life. Just come who you are. She committed her life to Christ on that day. All oh, everybody, read your Bible, pray, come to church. My mom said, hey, do you got peace with God? I don't want to hear it. Okay. She contacted him again. And he said, you know what? I, well, I'm trying to clean my life up. I'm trying to do it good. And my was like, you can't do it. A letter from Malin, dated 18 May 1822, closed. Dear Charlotte, cut the cable. It will, it will take too long to loosen it. Cut it. That's great advice. It is a small loss. The wind blows and the ocean is before you. The spirit of God in eternity. The friendship became lifelong. It's the beginning on 9 May 1822 was always regarded according to her sister, now there we go, a birthday of her soul and true spiritual life in peace. That's the birthday I celebrate. My April 25th, 1987. Hers, May 9th, 1822. That's the birthday. Not when she was born in sin and, and death and hell. When she was born to Jesus Christ. See, I'm not the only one who thinks like that. Her health improved by this by a visit following year to Normandy. In 1829, she became more almost helpless sufferer with only occasional interviews of relief. 1833, her father died. She wrote a pocket book. Oh, hymns, just hymns after hymns. Hymns. Her brother Henry Elliot wrote with her hymns. It's the Henry's wife died 1841. Her mother, after years severe uh, illness, died 18, April 80, 1843. Two of her sisters soon followed. So her home was broken up. In 1845, she and her surviving sister followed a summer sojourn to the European continent by fixing their home in Porkway. After 14 years, however, she returned to Brighton. Elliot was a member of the Church of England. She's saved. She knows she's saved. Years later, when she was not able to attend public worship. Gotta be in church when the door, church doors are open. What if you're unable? Look what she says. I mean, this story is remarkable. If we don't get to the hymn, the hymn is great. <laughs> and we all know the words of the hymn. Unable to attend public worship, she wrote, My Bible is my church. Now she's sick. It's not like she was being lazy and, and not serving the Lord. She was on the, I, I would assume she kept track of the people in church. I would assume, I hope they would have kept track with her, knowing how cold Christians are and unfriendly they are. My Bible is my church. It is always open. And there is my high priest ever waiting to receive me. Jesus Christ. Now, what's this? This is Waikika. They're not going to mention Jesus. There I have my confessional. Church of England has a confessional. In other words, she went to the Bible. She went to her high priest and confessed her sin. 
She didn't go to the priest in the Church of England. She went to the Word of God and she went to Jesus, who was the Word of God. There I have my confession, my thanksgiving, my psalm of praise. And the congregation of whole, the world is not worthy. Prophets and apostles and martyrs and confessors. In short, all I can all all I can want I find there. Didn't look, didn't look like she followed the ways of her church. This is the same woman who wrote just as I am. She lived out in the world. And she fought the Lord. She she thought if I do good. Thank God for, for a preacher of mine comes along and seriously tells her, hey, you can't do it. Trust and obey, if I can quote you know, to him. And what would be the hymn of the other the, the preachers of the church? Just pray, say, you know, read your Bible and come to our church. I didn't do nothing for her. Her brother died a year later. Eighteen sixty nine she fell seriously ill and managed to recover. She died in Brighton set twenty second September eighteen seventy one. And she's buried along with her brothers in the churchyard at St. Anthony's Hole. And I've heard this name I forget, but she was a distant relative of Virginia Woolf. Elliot wrote hundred and fifty hymns and many poems, some of which were printed Written, you know, anonymously get there, without her name. And just as I am, was the best known. Dr. Billy Graham wrote that his team used the hymn in almost every one of their crusades, since it presented the strongest possible biblical basis for the call of Christ. And true. Every church does it. Historian Kenneth Osbrick wrote that Just As I Am had touched more hearts and influenced more people for Christ than any other song ever written. Christian writer Lorella Rosen wrote, It's an amazing legacy of an invalid woman who suffered from depression and felt useless to God's service. Dr. John Gillian wrote, though weak and feeble in body, she possessed a strong imagination and well-cultured and intelligent mind. Her verse is characterized by tenderness, feeling, simplicity, deep devotion, perfect rhythm. She sang for those in sickness and sorrow as very others have done. One over here. Talk about the music. John Brownie described the hymn story in his book the hymns and hymn writers of the church hymner. Charlotte's brother, the Reverend Henry Elliott, planned to hold a charity bazaar designed to give at nominal cost a higher education to the doors of clergy supported by St. Mary's Church. And Jesus would have gone in there and kicked the tables over. Isn't it bizarre that churches have bazaars? The night before the bazaar, she kept awake by distressing thoughts of her apparent uselessness. And these thoughts pass by a transit easily to imagine into spiritual conflict. So she questioned the reality of her old spiritual life and wondered whether it were anything better after all an illusion of emotion, an illusion ready to sorrowfully dispel. The next day, the busy day of the bazaar, she laid on, upon the sofa in that most pleasant border set apart in her own Westfield Lodge, ever a dear result to her friend. 
The troubles of the night came back upon her with such force that she felt they must be met and conquered in the grace of God. She gathered up all her soul, the great certainty, not of her emotion, but of her salvation, her Lord, her power, his strength, and taking pen and paper from the table, she deliberately set down the writing of her own comfort, the formula of her faith. Hers was a heart which always tended to express its depths in verse. So in the verse, she re restated to herself the gospel of pardon, peace, and heaven. Probably without difficulty, this is her brother right now, probably without difficulty of long pause, she wrote to him, getting comfort by this definitely recollecting the eternity of the rock, capital R, beneath her feet. Then, excuse me, there then, always not only for the sewing past moment, even now, she was accepted in the beloved, just as I am. And that, I'm gonna, I want to get his name again, because I want to get it down, recorded. Uh, Dr. Caesar Mellon. Again, uh, Billy Graham converted to Christianity in 1934, revival meeting in Charlotte, North Carolina, led by evangelist Mordecai Ham. Great name, you ought to know. Hearing the altar call song, Just As I Am. Billy Graham listening to Mordecai Ham. They played Just As I Am in 1934. Billy Graham in Charlotte, North Carolina came to Jesus Christ. You know what a lot of churches do? They want to do the Billy Graham thing. Everybody come and get, listen. That's not how everybody say. The song became the altar call song in the Billy Graham crusade in the latter half of the 20th century. Listen, everybody can't get saved just as I am. It's imitation. Graham used the title of the hymn as his title of his 1997 book, Just As I Am, the autobiography of Billy Graham. Michael W. Smith, I don't know, sung the song in the tribute to Graham in the 44 GMA, I don't know, Dub Award. It's a popular song been by Johnny Cash. Willie, I Don't Pay My Taxes, Nelson. Again, Johnny Cash, Jay Leach, I don't know, Johnny Cash, Chris Potter, Christian Chinua, uh Brand New Band, uh, Mars Hill Church. So, that's remarkable. There's some more information here about uh, Charlie Elliott. She was born March 18, 1789 in Brighton, England. She died September 22, 1871, 82 years, and she suffered. Her resting place is St. Andrew's Church in Hove, English, British. So, I mean, her life lived outside the church. And her family was the church. And the Great Awakening was in her family blood. So let's see. We can do it without singing. Yes, I'm not I'm not against the altar call and just as I am, but you can't expect everybody's gonna get saved just as I am. You know? Just as I am without one plea. <laughs> There's nothing else to plead. But thy blood was shed for me. Remember, remember she tried to tell them, you know, oh, I'm trying to do I'm trying to do good. I'm trying to clean myself up, and then there's no other plea. And what did, what did he tell her? Where is it? Come just as you are. There's no other plea. And we get people all the time to come, well, I'm good. You're not good enough. And look at the blood of Jesus. 
Look at the blood of Jesus. There it is. The blood of God was shed for me. There you go. There's a guy. There's a guy. Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures. And that thou, Jesus, biddest me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. And Jesus said, except the Spirit draw men. He said, the Holy Spirit dwell, uh, bid me. And I fought the preacher, and I fought Jesus, but I came. Just as the preacher said, let's find that again. Come just as you are, and she came just as she was, a sinner. Just as I am and waiting not to rid my soul of one dark blood. She was waiting. She was waiting for her to do something when Christ has already done it for her. To thee whose blood again can cleanse each body. Listen, he said, listen, I'm trying to I'm trying to cleanse my life. I'm trying. I can't even do one dark spot. But the blood did all the spots. Old Lamb of God, Jesus, I come. She wasn't coming until the preacher came with the right words. Say these prayers, go to church, read your Bible. How about getting in? Do you have the peace of God? Do you know where you're going when you're going to die? Just I am, though tossed about with many a, many a conflict, many a doubt, and we read that in her life. She struggled, she fought. She fought the Holy Spirit convicting power of the grace. She even said, I'm not worthy of the grace of God. I didn't know about the grace of God. And I fought going to church. I didn't want to go to church. And when I heard the gospel, I forget, I, I, I went Sunday morning, I heard the gospel, I believe that's the only time I went, and it's like Monday or Tuesday that week, because it was that week. I called my grandma and said, you know, I got to talk to somebody. Something's wrong here. I don't know what it is. In April 25th, 1987, I was in the new birth. I have a birthday in God, in Jesus Christ, in the Holy Spirit. I didn't fight as Charlotte Elliott and many people do. I was like, something has to be done. I don't know what it is. And that's what, that was my salvation. I had no altar call. I opened the Bible, showed me I was going to hell, showed me that I was a sinner. I did not want to go to hell. I knelt down at a coffee table in my grandparents' living room and received the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. Listen, I've got, I have been part of God for men getting saved at a, at a plastic table in a jail. I've had part in a jail where the men sat in the chairs and dealt with them about their sin. And I guarantee some of them probably fought the Lord. And many fight the Lord before salvation. Fightings within and without. Fightings within. And fears without. O Lamb of God, I saw my cup. No, uh, no, God's salvation is not good enough. No, I'm not good enough. Oh, but if I die, I'm, oh, God. Oh, do you have peace with God? I don't want to talk about it. And then, well, I'm trying to clean my life up. I'm trying to come just as you are. She said she wanted to clean her life before, before becoming a Christian. Prayer in the Bible and going to church didn't do it. And I guarantee, I guarantee, I guarantee that Reverend Dr. Cesar Mallon, I guarantee he did not stop praying. 
I guarantee the conviction power of the Holy Spirit and the prayers of that pastor and maybe of her family, she came. Of course, she says, I come. I come. Just as I am, poor. Man, she had an education. She had society life. She had, but she says, I'm poor. Why? Because she had nothing to give to God that God would accept. You can have all the money, all the gold, all the silver, all the copper, all the cars, all the buildings, all the properties, everything in the world. You can have it all. And still die and go to hell. And then lose it all because you can't take it with you. Wretched. Oh, I guarantee this hymn is not sung in a modern church. Because who is wretched? I was wretched. I was miserable and poor. And receiving Christ as my Savior, I became rich. I became a child of God. I became saved. And it's funny, what she described here is a description of God's description of Laodicean church age. Oh, we're rich. We have no need of nothing. God says, you're poor and miserable and naked. The Laodicean church age is what a man comes as Christ before he's saved. Isn't that interesting? She's blind. Now, she wasn't blind like Fanny Crosby blind. Listen, this woman grew up and her grandpa was, was part help and part means of the great awakening in, in, in England. And her, her father and her grandfather were reverence of the church. And she was in the religious realm. She knew about Mary. She went to St. Mary's Church. She knew about Mark. There was another church. And she said, you know what? As far as salvation, as far as gospel, I am blind. Because I'm not saved. Wretched, blind, sight, riches. Healing of the mind. Yea, all I need in thee to find, O Lamb of God, I come. I come. What, what's a man need? What does he need? He needs the salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ that when he dies, he'll be absent from the body and present with the Lord. And after salvation, you do what the Bible says. You pray, you read your Bible, you study the Bible, you go out and tell people about the gospel, you help grow Christians. And after salvation, after you become a born again Christian, after you're able to earn crowns and rewards and an inheritance, and you'll have riches and grace and wonders and glory, but you can't come to Jesus with that to be saved. You've got to come to Jesus poor, wretched, blind. And then become a child of God through Jesus Christ, through the gospel. Then you become rich. Then you become into the family of God. Just as I am. Thou wilt receive, wilt welcome. There's one thing she never said. She never said that Jesus Christ forsook her. She forsook the Lord. And there are people I know and there are people, well, I'm just too wicked to be saved. No, Elliot knew she was wicked. She knew how wretched she was. She just wanted a clean house before she became. She wanted to be a Martha. Well, let me clean myself up before I come to. That's not how you do it. Come as I are. Just as I am. And he will receive you. He will welcome you. He will pardon. You know what a pardon is? A pardon is. I am guilty of the crime set forth. If you're not guilty, you don't get a pardon. She 
come out and said, I am the sinner. If you come to God and say, I, what sins are you talking about? You're not going to get pardoned. Well, God, I'm not that bad. I'm good. You're not going to get the pardon. Well, God, you know, if I clean myself up, Miss Elliot, you're not going to get the pardon. How about, well, God, I got to come to you on only to you. I am wicked. I can't even clean myself. I tried, but it didn't work. I'm poor, miserable, wretched, and blind. God, pardon received. Cleanse. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There's a cleansing. She couldn't cleanse herself. The blood of Jesus Christ was only able to cleanse her. Relieve all oh, the peace you get. I remember again after I was saved, there's one time. A week later after I went to church and after that Saturday, I received Christ as my Savior. And the, uh, the 26th, I went to church and made, you know, hey, I received Jesus Christ as my Savior. April 26th, I went and told my father, the very first person that I witnessed to. And it was, I don't know, it was that day or Monday again. I, I'm in the shower. I, I, I'm taking a shower. You know what? I said to myself, wow, I feel clean. And it ain't the bar or soap. It ain't the body wash. It's not the shampoo. I feel clean. I feel cleansed. Jesus saved. Because thy promise, I believe, there's salvation. She finally believed God at his word. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's simple? That's simple. I believe it. You're saved. And she had to be a sinner because she pardoned. She had to be a sinner because I tried to clean myself before it didn't work. You can't come to Jesus. Oh, I believe Jesus and not be a sinner. Now, I'll tell you some of the problems with churches today. Oh, if you just ask Jesus into your life and you just get saved and say this prayer and no mention of sins, no mention of the need of a pardon, but, you know, you can be in Jesus' happy, blessed land on the other side of the Jordan stormy banks and go to heaven and you say this prayer and you do not mention the vile and wickedness of sin. I'm so far to say also as far as salvation, you better have an open Bible. You better have scripture, a gospel track. I think we got means of altar cords and salvation today in today's church. I think we got it too easy. Salvation is simple. But I think the church has made it simple to this. To the fact is, it's not really salvation. Now we'll know. But woe be to the man that's witness to a sinner, not telling him he's a sinner, and he says a prayer, and Jesus says, depart from me, you nurkers of iniquity, I never knew you, but Lord, didn't I say a prayer? Depart from me, you worker of iniquity, I never knew you. But I said a prayer. And you were deceived. Which is just as violent and wicked as the Catholic Church, as the Jehovah Witnesses, as the Mormons, as evolution. To get a man to have faith in a prayer and not Jesus. And not coming to Jesus as a sinner. He said, well, Paul was out, you know, he said, what must I do to be saved? God was working on that man's heart. I guarantee Paul and Silas witnessed somehow, some way to the men of that prison and to the jailers somehow. Listen, the word of God went around that you could not miss the word of God at that point. It wasn't too long ago that Jesus suffered and died on the cross. I may be a little hard, but I don't think I'm going to have anybody... Here, depart from me, work of iniquity. I never knew you. O Lamb of God, I come. I come. And she comes as a believer. 
just as I am. Thy love. God's love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have ever loved. We love him because he first loved us. For God, God sent forth his son. Thy love unknown has broken every barrier down. That love unknown. Not everybody's heard the gospel. Not everybody's heard about the saving grace. We are to go in the world and preach the gospel. And when you go, you break barriers down. Some men and women may build up walls against God. Woe be to them. Now to be thine. I'm thine. When she received Christ, when I received Christ, when I came from that from a guilty sinner to receive that pardon, I became God's child. He adopted me and gave me the comforter to come and bide with me forever. Can I lose it? Well, the Holy Spirit's gonna dwell and the comforter's gonna dwell with me forever. To be thine, she says. Look at the gospel. Look at the surety of salvation. This woman has pain. This woman has suffering. This woman has, has, has had her father die, his mother die, her sisters die, her brother die. She was in anguish. She lived in painfulness. All the faith that she had in God. Yay! Thine alone. The devil don't belong to her no more, and she don't belong to the devil. She belongs to God. She belongs to Jesus. She belongs to the Holy Spirit, yet the three in one and the one in three. O Lamb of God, I come. I come. How's that? It's a remarkable study and a remarkable that this woman had all the religion in her house. Her father was a reverend. Her great her grandfather was a reverend. They went to the, the, the church of the Church of England. And still she was not saved. That didn't save her. She said, I tried to clean myself. I tried to make myself clean before I became a Christian. That didn't work. I prayed and I read the Bible and I went to churches. That ain't going to do it. A preacher come to her and say, hey, you got the peace of God. Leave me alone. I'm offended that you said that. Okay. A couple days later, she calls up and says, I apologize. Because I don't have the peace of God. I've been trying to earn the peace of God. And what, what did he say? Come. Just as you are. I'm going to read this paragraph again before we close. Because this is important. About Charlotte Elliott. She became a favorite in society circles. Where religion was not mentioned. Religion was mentioned in her house. Religion was mentioned in her church, her father, her grandfather. And then she went out in a world where religion wasn't even mentioned. You know, don't mention politics or religion. But look what God did to her. But a severe sickness in 1821 removed her from these companions, the society circles, and led her to feel a need for a personal savior. Oh, God, how dare you make people sick? Oh, God, you the, the tragedy and the problems that you cause people. It caused this woman to get saved. Thank God that this sickness took her out of the world and brought her to Jesus. That's my prayer, by the way. For very dear loved ones that I know, I'm going to pray that God break your butt break you down until there's nothing more than Jesus to save your soul.
At this time, the Reverend Dr. Caesar Mallon of Geneva, who was on a visit to her father's chaplain residence, Grove House, asked her whether she was at peace with God. I would assume there was more than that, but we're looking at Lake Pika. A question she resented at the time and refused to talk about it that day. So there was more talk. She's like, no. But a few days later, she called on Dr. Mallon. And I'm saying his name wrong, and I apologize. She called on Dr. Mallon and apologized, saying she wanted to cleanse her life before becoming a Christian. You know what she said? I'm not good, but I want to be good. And then when I am good, I'm going to come and be Christ. Well, man and Dr. Manning answered, come just as you are. I don't have enough money. Come just as you are. I'm vile. I'm wicked. God would never, never save a sinner me like me. Come just as you are. Well, I haven't given up. Come just as you are. Well, I come just as you are. But come just as you are. And she committed her life to Christ on that day. A letter from Malin dated 18 May 1822. Close. There shall it cut the cable. That's found in Corinthians. With Belial and Christ. Separate yourself. Cut the cable. It will take too long to unloose it. Cut it. It's a small loss. The society, the world. The wind blows and the ocean is before you. The spirit of God's eternity. The friendship became lifelong. And beginning on... 9 May 1822 was always regarded according to her sister, the birthday of her soul to the true spiritual life and feet. On May 9th, 1822, Charlotte Elliott received the Lord Jesus Christ as her Savior. That's a birthday to be celebrated. Not the birthday of being born into sin, into the devil, and to hell. But the day that you became a child of God, the day that Christ said, I'll save you, the day that you received the pardon of Jesus Christ, and the day that you became a child of God, the day that the Holy Spirit came and dwelt in you, in, in you and the day that your name was written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and the day that the angels rejoiced in heaven, that's the birthday to celebrate. That's the birthday that gets you absent from the body and present with the Lord. And God used the sickness. And what she say? O Lamb of God, I come. I come. 